sorry, Monsignor. Uh, that's it. <laughs> okay, give me a wave. Is she monitoring your audio, right? Oh, it will. Okay. Ten minutes. Let's get some microphones. Bring a mic down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to still just stand here until the people get in. I'll let them in. Sign check, everything okay? All good? Everyone happy? Yes, yes. Everyone getting audio? Yeah. All good? Lots of nods. No problem. Glamorous life. It's a glamorous life. Indeed, yes. At least you get a chair. I'm the one that's normally crouched at the floor in the front for the camera. So. Yeah. Half our knees. How the other half live, eh? Old, old cherry over there. <laughs> what is that guy called again? The day of Peter Tatchell. Really could be worse, could be that woman pushing the uh, bike. Oh. oh my god, that woman pushing the bike who just kind of came along and then just kind of stood there, wasn't it? <laughs> I've never shouted obscenities at an old woman before, but you know. Especially if you just came along the road like that. Yeah. It was the one with the bike, isn't it? She just kind of pushed along and then st kind of stood in the middle of the centre from all the Amazing, amazing scenes. <sighs> ah, every <laughs> single second of it. Yeah. I've got nothing else to do. I'll just be sitting, looking at the back of my phone. Came at last. Exactly. Yeah. It's the only time I've ever done my phone. I just want to talk to Faye at LP. That's all it is.
This one's going to be moved the podium. No. There's a tripod on top of it. They will still be speaking here. There's a tripod on top, so it might shake. Can somebody give a hand? Thanks, everyone. Um, the a High Court has um, provisionally allowed uh, permission to appeal in relation to the First Amendment um, and Article 10, which is freedom of expression. The point relating to nationality, so the fact that the United States is going to discriminate against Julian um, and uh, say that he is not protected by the First Amendment due to his nationality, being Australian. And thirdly, in relation to the death penalty, because the United States is um, able to change the charges once he's in the United States, to uh, charges that uh, carry the death penalty. So these are the three issues that the United States has identified as um, uh, posing a, uh, a major challenge to extraditing Julian. Of course, uh, 
the case should have just been thrown out uh, and Julian should not have spent a single day in prison, the United States is bringing a case um, based on a persecution of a journalist for his political opinions. He expresses his political opinions through his publishing work and um, rather than ask for a political intervention from the US government, the British courts should just have thrown out this case uh, because it criminalizes journalism. And that is the takeaway here, really, when you're looking at the, um, at the um, decision today, that they have gone to the heart of it, and it is Article 10, the First Amendment, freedom of expression, that is at issue. And the British courts are really tying themselves in knots um, and giving the United States yet another opportunity to make a political, not a legal intervention, a political intervention, uh, because the case that they have been bringing for the past five years or 13 years, depending on where you start counting, is one that attacks the freedom to publish the truth. And so the courts um, are asking for an assurance that actually contradicts the case that the United States has been bringing. And the United States government, uh, let's be clear, if it's a diplomatic assurance, it's a political assurance. Um, and uh, we've seen it already in the past. U.S. assurances are not uh, worth the, written, the paper that they are written on. The United States, of course, is a country that has plotted to assassinate and kidnap Julian, a publisher, in order to silence him, uh, the United States under CIA Director Mike Pompeo um, discussed at the highest levels of, the, of uh, the administration in the White House plans to assassinate and kidnap Julian. This case comes about as a result of those discussions. The United States um, and the CIA were hatching plans, um, Mike Pompeo told his, uh, his workers at the CIA in Langley to elaborate plans about how to go about killing Julian. And then, only after that, the DOJ uh, uh, charged Julian. And this was all under the Trump administration. And as, as you all know, this all relates to publications from 2010 and 2011 under the Obama administration. And the Obama administration looked at this case and said, we will not take a case against Julian Assange in relation, in relation to the Chelsea Manning publications because he is a publisher. He is not a hacker, he is a publisher and it is impossible to distinguish what WikiLeaks did publishing these, these, uh, this material from what the New York Times did in relation to this material and from what the New York Times does every single day you know full well that, uh, so, uh, that national defense information is published on a daily basis in every broadsheet, in every country, or in every country where there is a free press, every single day. So what, there, what this case is, is an, an, unprecedented, preced, an unprecedented case in which uh, the Espionage Act is being repurposed in order to criminalize what the New York Times does every single day. And that has not changed. The New York Times problem, what Obama called the New York Times problem, remains. And what Julian's case is, is a, an acceptance of the New York Times problem and an inversion of the New York Times problem. They've turned it into the New York Times solution, an ability to be able to take criminal prosecution against the New York Times for publishing the truth. That is what this case means. And that is what um, the uh, United States is pursuing. The United States should not issue assurances. They should just drop the case because this case, as the Obama administration rightly identified, is an attack on all of you, on the press, on freedom of conscience, and on the public's right to know. And we all know um, at this crucial moment that we're, we, uh, we find ourselves in, um, with the conflicts in, in the Middle East and in Ukraine, uh, that the press needs to be able to be free to publish the truth about what happens in conflict and war. And uh, those who are involved in um, driving war 
should not be given the power to be able to silence and imprison the journalists who, who are engaged in exposing war crimes. Thank you. What is deeply worrying, uh, reading through the uh, decision from the court today, is the fact that Julian Assange is not allowed to present evidence in appeal court about the plot to kidnap or assassinate him. I think that's absurd. There is not enough evidence, they say. Well, that has been a deeply investigated, investigative journalistic piece by Yahoo News, based on more than 30 sources. It has not been denied. On the contrary, in essence, it has been confirmed by Mike Pompeo, then CIA director, when these plans were drawn up, when he stated that the leakers should be hunted and they should be charged for leaking this information. You cannot go after somebody for leaking information that isn't truthful, can you? So it's absurd that he is not allowed to present that as an argument against an extradition in a courtroom here. It is also absurd in my mind that Julian is not allowed to argue in court that his extradition would violate the UK-US extradition treaty, which specifically prohibits extradition for political offenses. And the judge is here to say that actually the treaty doesn't mean anything. It's in black and white. It should be of concern to everybody. The treaty obligation is null and void. However, the information that uh, the opportunity that is now given to the United States, as Stella said, to once again amend their case with the so-called assurances of political intervention is a charade. But by giving them the opportunity to make assurances that he will be treated as a journalist with First Amendment protection, as a U.S. journalist and not be discriminated against as an Australian citizen, blows a huge hole in the entire argument in the United States. We've been going on year after year after year saying that he is not a journalist and that he does not have First Amendment protection in the United States. So what is left? The judges here are basically saying, give us assurances that he is treated as a journalist with the entire time, and the entire case has been based on their argument that he is not. So at least today we got an acceptance, de facto, of the journalistic aspect of the work that Julian did, which everybody understands and knows. So this is just a continuation. It, it should not have happened. Basically, in their own writing, the judges had arguments to allow the appeal. It's, the arguments are all there. Why continue this charade, this lawfare against Julian? In two weeks, he will have spent five years in Belmar's prison. Five years. And we still haven't come to a conclusion in this case. The onus is now on the United States government. That's where you should be going and ask them, you should drop the case because there's nothing left in it after today's verdict by the judges. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jen Robinson. I'm a barrister here at Dowdy Street Chambers and counsel to Julian Assange and to WikiLeaks. The court's decision today demonstrates just how flawed the US extradition request is. We are five years into this process now, five years in which Julian Assange has been in prison here in the UK without conviction, on remand, in relation to an extradition request that should never have been brought and that we've seen today from the court's decision raises fundamental concerns about free speech, the First Amendment, and the risk that a journalist and publisher could be subjected to the death penalty. But the US is being asked five years after seeking this extradition request to provide these diplomatic assurances to remedy what we say are these fatal flaws in the US case goes to show just how problematic this request is. The judgment today demonstrates that if Julian was extradited to the United States, there is a very real risk and concern that he will, not be, he will not be afforded free speech protections. This is a dangerous precedent. It means that any journalist and publisher who is outside of the United States publishing truthful information about the United States but is not a United States citizen will not benefit from the First Amendment. And that should be concerning for every single journalist in this room.
phones aren't that good for that big a distance. Okay, you ready to do this? Three in the morning? Yeah, I was on the other side of the bridge and then came over this side. My coworkers over there. Once he got there, I switched to find a different shot. Oh, wow. So, wow. not a lot of folks know about this. There's there's some camera guys down there. So oh, okay. It's, it's becoming more known. Yeah. But most of the media is across the way. Um, so you've gone down. Just, yeah. That way. Okay. See that kind of tan of the building? Yes. You got to be made yes. for that. Yeah. Right kind of where the, the bridge starts. Yeah. Yeah, because you can't get to um, Fort Armistead Road. Well, yeah, Fort Armistead That's Road. That's close. Um, let's, not for me to, to speculate, um, what's clear is that this case is extremely controversial in the United States. It has always been controversial. Uh, during the Obama administration, of course, uh, they decided not to prosecute Julian over the Chelsea Manning publications. And uh, during the Trump administration, two of the prosecutors who were working on this case um, left, um, were reassigned after the Espionage Act uh, charges were brought. Uh, they were taken off the case because they disagreed. And we know that this, uh, this uh, uh, conflict has been at the heart of, of each and every administration because within um, each and every administration there is uh, an awareness uh, that that this is a very dangerous case, and this case, in fact, can be the the end of the First Amendment. Um, there are, of course, uh, people like uh, Mike Pompeo who want uh, Julian dead, and that is why Julian will never be safe in the United States, no matter what. It is unprecedented uh, that you have a case in which you have reports that have never been contradicted by the CIA or Mike Pompeo, and in fact confirmed effectively by Mike Pompeo when he said that the sources for the story about the kidnap-kill plot against Julian should be uh, 
prosecuted under the Espionage Act, not for libel, but for disclosing state secrets. So um, there's no denial that the United States has engaged in a murder conspiracy against Julian. Um, so there are different, there are different uh, interests at play. There are different um, actors at play. Uh, ultimately, those who do not want to see information that is embarrassing to the administration they see a utility in having Julian imprisoned because not only is there an attack on whistleblowers, there's an attack now on journalists as well. If you have uh, whistleblowers unwilling to, um, whistleblowers knowing that they will be prosecuted under the Espionage Act and now also publishers and journalists, um, then uh, people will be too afraid to leak and they will also be, also be too afraid to publish. That is what um, the, uh, the purpose of it uh, is. So I, I see it as um, three levels. Uh, I see the prosecution against Julian um, on three levels. One is to silence Julian and punish him for his political opinions to stop um, him from, from embarrassing uh, the powerful. The second is to intimidate the rest of the press, to send a signal, to use him as a deterrent, to make sure that no one else will. And the third is to keep the public in ignorance because that's the effect of the first two. If you don't have um, anyone willing or able to publish the truth anymore, then the public um, can be manipulated and that's the ultimate goal. Well, I can only speak uh, about my own reaction. Um, I find the judgment utterly bizarre. Um, as I said before, my impression is that the court is tying itself in knots um, to find uh, basically passing the buck to the US government. Um, and inviting it to contradict its own case in order to wade through his extradition. But this is par for the course in this case. Bizarre decisions by the courts, unpredictable legal proceedings, exceptions. It's a political case and this is what you come to expect when you have a political case. It's political on every level. The publications were political, exposing what, um, uh, what was happening um, during the wars by the occupying forces, the cover-ups, um, the torture, the, the uh, assassination squads, um, the lack of accountability, uh, the political nature of the offenses. The Espionage Act prohibited under Article, two, uh, Article 4 sorry, of the UK-US extradition treaty, barred from extradition and yet the courts have said it's fine. You can extradite him because the treaty is not enforceable domestically. There is no protection for the individual even when there are political offences brought in the extradition. That's the decision. Um, the political motivation of the Trump administration in bringing this case and the Biden administration for keeping it going to be able to bring uh, criminal prosecution against a publisher for publishing the truth. And the purpose to punish his political opinions. Uh, in fact, the Obama administration from the very beginning said um, that, the, uh, that WikiLeaks and Julian opposed the Afghan war and therefore um, 
was not, uh, uh, they were trying to persuade the rest of the press to not um, amplify WikiLeaks because Julian had the opinion that the Afghan war was wrong. So he's being published, punished for his political opinions and the whole case is a, an attack on um, public interest journalism and public interest journalist, journalism that conflicts with the, the uh, interests of those who want to drive and continue wars. I can't speculate on whether the US will offer these assurances or what they'll do with them, but what we do know is that on the basis of numerous documented cases and Amnesty International's own position that US diplomatic assurances, we say, aren't worth the paper they're written on. Uh, it is very concerning that the court would um, invite assurances on matters of this seriousness in a case involving a journalist and a publisher. And as we've said, the US government should not be offering assurances, they should be dropping the case altogether. And that's the only satisfactory outcome. Even if we receive the assurances, we're not confident that we could rely on them. Well, in relation to that Wall Street Journal piece, I'd refer you to Barry Pollack's uh, statement. That's Julian's U.S. Um, defense counsel. Uh, your question should really be posed to the Department of Justice. Uh, but now with this decision, I think the correct question is why don't you drop the case? Julian has been in prison for almost five years. This case serves no purpose other than to intimidate journalists all around the world, not just here, not just in the United States. It is sending a chilling effect. It is creating not just a legal precedent, but a political precedent that is putting journalists all over the world at risk because it is setting a new normal. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there will be opportunity for short one-to-one -one interviews um, afterwards. If you're interested in that, please come up and speak to me, and I will try to respond to that as best I can. Um, but thank you all for attending. And if you'd like to speak to Jen, next 20 minutes is, uh, is your prime time. So I'm sorry, I have to go to the Joanne in Poland, so yeah. I need to leave in 20 minutes. probably want to set up a few different areas. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Really yeah. 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 And if anyone has Two, two questions, if so Max. Yeah, very good.